if you have dabbled with web development before, it will be easy for you to understand the structure of XML layouts. Each opening tag has a closing tag. So for example, you have this layout, which is constraint layout. It has an opening tag and a closing tag. I put the characteristics and details in the opening tag. And if I want to put anything or next anything, I can put it in between. But currently I don't need to do that. So I just close it. But for the constraint layout, this is the layout of the UI. The layout determines how I'm going to arrange my view. So this is the opening and this is the closing. Text size specifies how big the text is going to appear. So imagine if I turn this to 53. Did you see how big it turned? If I turned it to just 3. Now very tiny. So I'll leave it at 23. The text, as the name implies, determines what is displayed. You can easily change it. And you see it did reflect. You also have the constraints. So if we go to the design, we can see the constraints over here. I will talk more constraint layouts in coming lessons. If you want to edit the features, you can easily go to the XML code. If you feel you don't really want to deal with XML, you can edit using the editor here. So the things we could do here, we can as well edit it here. You can see text. You can edit the text here. You can edit the text size and a lot. Sometimes you might just want to edit something quickly without having to deal with XML code. You also have app manifest, which has the same structure of opening tag and closing tag. You have your application tag. Now the application normally states things about the application as a whole. Now each activity has a tag. Normally it specifies which Java class is handling this activity. So you start with dot main activity. If you have other features such as intent filters, in this case, main activity is the launcher. So that is why we have this. If you go to values, you see colors. Now, this states the colors that are being used in the application. By default, you might see a green, green, pink color. You can easily change it. Let's say I change this to green, this to yellow, this to another yellow. You can see that the color changed. You also have your string resource. Normally this is where you put strings where it can change easily. So. For example, this text I have here, if I make it a string resource, so if I create a string, let's say a string, I'll call this hello, that is the name of the resource, then the actual value of the resource, I'll say, hey there. So if I go back to my activity main, instead of doing this, I would just simply say at string hello. So this will simply go to the string resource and look for hello. 
and hello says hey dear and then it prints it out now this has an advantage because i can have different resources for different languages and by the time i want to change it i don't need to go to every single activity to change it manually you're normally advised to keep your strings in a string resource you have your icon which by default is just a green background with an android head which will come for now <laughs> so you can always change that and have your drawables this is where we would normally keep our artwork and graphics for the application things like our pngs or vectors we can keep them here those are the files we would be using often with time you would become very comfortable with android studio and developing android that even if i woke you up from sleep you will still be able to get your way around android studio